Free Golden Birds for War Thunder. Inspect the app in the description below. How to fight at night. Ah yes, here we join an aircraft, promptly making its way to its target in Berlin. But wait! This pilot has failed to notice that he's undertaken his mission into the fortress-like heart of Nazi-occupied Europe in broad daylight. A shocking error. Now, normally, a cutting-edge handy page such as this would dance all over a wing of German fighter races, but luckily for Goering, today's sortie requires a heavy load in our Bombay. And so, it's a fair fight, and by the looks of it, one that the Germans have just about managed to scrape a negligible victory from, banking on tremendous amounts of luck. Which is precisely why sorties such as this must always be undertaken under the cover of darkness. So let's try that again. Much better. It's darker out there than a vampire's pantry. But wait! Are you at home having trouble making sense of these dark images? Well, if you can't see them, the Germans won't have a chance. Now, much like cricket, operating at night is a British game, and as such has a similarly sized rule book. The first rule being, never be detected in the first place. Now, to achieve this, you must fly in under the German radar, at treetop level. Now, some critics would have you believe that this is somehow dangerous, but we reckon it's not. But if it is your first stop, our experts recommend you follow rule two and lower your undercarriage, just in case. That way, if you suddenly make contact with the ground, you'll softly be reminded to pull up by subtle vibrations through your control column. But what's this? German anti-aircraft fire? Oh, oh dear. Yes, it appears that the Bosch flak has marginally blemished our bomber. Uh, this was down to our crew not following rule three, which clearly states you should always suppress the enemy anti-aircraft fire with your own forward-facing machine guns. Now remember, it's vital you load full tracer belts for this job so that the Germans know you mean to shoot them. In fact, it says here right under rule four, always load Tracer. Bogey, quarter to seven o'clock high. Schau, Hans, Leuchtburgeschosse. <laughs> ah, no, hang on. Must have been a mirage. It is France, you know. Still, if there were any German night fighters out there, that will have scared them off. Ah, yes. Uh, now, it appears what has happened here is that a German night fighter crew has, by blind luck, stumbled upon our bomber completely by chance. If this ever happens to you, be sure to consult your night fighting handbook mid-attack and follow rule five. Now, this rule proposes you immediately action a corkscrew maneuver to lose your attacker. This this simple and easy to learn maneuver can be done by throwing your aircraft into a sharp diving turn to port, followed by a sharp climbing turn to starboard. And due to their third-rate build quality, German aircraft will almost never follow you into such a maneuver for fear of disassembly. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that was obviously caused by some severe underlying battle damage. Undetectable to the untrained eye. I mean, there's a lot of flak out there, you know, going off, and it's very windy. I think what we need to do now is follow rule six and upgrade to an even more durable aircraft. Yes, that's much better. This is the Wellington Bomber, and with its geodesic design, it's able to soak up almost limitless volleys of cannon fire from any number of Jerry's designs. Like this shoddy old Dornier Bomber that's been ill-pressed into night service due to its poor performance in daylight operations. By contrast, no German bomber is safe over the skies of Britain with the advanced British Still Blenheim night fighter commanding the channel. Fire!
Did you get him? Nope. Now, a couple of months ago, we here at the Ministry of War were told that the Germans were bringing down our bombers using jazz music. And so, in retaliation, we retrofitted our entire fleet of Wellingtons with state-of-the-art sound systems, blasting out our own big band music to fight back. I think there's a fighter on us, Skipper. Roger that! Navigator, prepare Glenn Miller! In the mood, up and fair! <laughs> Yes, well, of course, it's only then that we learned that this German jazz music was nothing musical at all, but rather a German code name for arranging cannons on the roof of their aircraft in an underhand attempt to bring down our bombers from below. And so, to counter this absurd tactic, our boffins developed Rule 7, always fly in irregular patterns. Now, the trick is, every ten minutes or so, nosedive your aircraft a few hundred feet to stop Jerry from attempting his tricks. Permanently. Aha! Yet another German night fighter vanquished in the skies over Europe. But blast! It appears our WMP has suffered damage to its starboard motor in the conflict. But luckily, the Wellington can easily fly on one engine. Oh. Well, you know what they say. When two engines just isn't enough, follow Rule 8 and fly a Lancaster. <laughs> Better stop that. I mean, it's so close to the original score, I'm in danger of a copyright claim. Uh, I mean, the Lancaster, the best aircraft in the world. And with its four Merlin engines, it's already made it to where we think tonight's target probably is. And so open the Bombay goes. And in accordance with Rule 9, there go the propaganda leaflets lethally dropped over Berlin in a wide morale shattering pattern. Yes, those accurately deployed pieces of paper tell the truth about the war and convince Germany to give it up through the use of clearly printed attention grabbing well argued points. And now it's time for a speedy return to base for this bomber. It's mission a resounding success. Nah. If this ever happens to you, what you need is a faster bomber. Yes, that's good. Which is why once you've softly landed, evaded capture and made your way back to Blighty, you should follow rule 10 and develop yourself something like the Avro Vulcan. Now fair play, the war ended seven years ago, but I'm sure we'll get to use the Avro Vulcan in combat any day now. Anyway, I sincerely hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please especially like via Carrier Pigeon. Special thanks go to my Patreon supporters, as always, in particular this week, the Snazzy Comet. So thank you very much, and, uh, cheerio!